This is the flowchart of the project we are going to take a look at today. So basically we want to start in the top left corner here by setting the URLs to the web pages we want to extract some data from. And normally for this we just use like beautiful soup and normally web scraping. But we are going to do something different. We are going to use something called Puppeteer to screenshot each web page. And when we have those screenshots we can actually analyze them using uh, GPT-4 Vision and we can extract the information we want from each web page. So this is a bit different way to approaching like web scraping and we can get more information reliable I think using this tactic. And with all the information we have gathered we can use uh, in this case just a Mistral model to write a structured format uh, from the information by using some kind of prompt engineering right. Uh, you can also use an open AI model here. And I also wanted to get a voice version of the output, so we're just going to use that using the 11 Labs API. Apple has announced that it will stop selling the Apple Watch Series 9 and Watch Ultra 2. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. So now let's take a look at the code and let's do some practical examples. Okay, so let's take a look at the Python code here. So uh, I usually just work here in Visual Studio Code, but for the video I like to look at it here on Notepad++ with my default theme. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to mention AI Jason and his YouTube channel because here I kind of got the idea to use the Puppeteer to do the screenshots in Node.js, right? Uh, so I just made a fork from his GitHub here uh, because, uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of experience with Node, so I just wanted to, yeah, get a working version. Uh, so we just forked that and we added a lot of functionality on top. So we kind of just kept the Puppeteer code as he wrote it. We just made a few changes as I'm going to show you now. So we kind of use Puppeteer, we use something called Stealth Plugging that will give us more access to websites we put in the URLs, right? And we have something called Set Viewport. This is kind of the shape or the aspect ratio we want from our um, screenshots. We also can put full page to true here and then we'll get like the full screenshot of the whole page. But on new sites and stuff, that will get very weird. I think I got like an aspect ratio like 1200 times 30,000. So that doesn't really work. So you just gotta play around with the numbers here to get the screenshot that fits your use case. Other than that, the Python functions we have are like the... Here we just use the get Mistral response. So we are using the Mistral API and the mysterious media model that we don't know so much about yet. Uh, we are streaming this, uh, as you will see pretty soon. We have a function to kind of encode the images or the screenshots into base64. So we can kind of use the GPT-4 vision to extract information, right? And yeah, here's our function to kind of get the screenshot that is using some kind of sub-process to run the Node.js script. Uh, pretty straightforward. And uh, yeah, we set like this system prompt here. So you are a web scraper, your job is to extract only tech news headlines based on a screenshot of a website. This is just the use case uh, I have in this part. So use a short structured bullet points format. So we're gonna see how that works. Okay, so we have this vision crawl function here that basically just takes a URL and it uses the prompt uh, because we have this list of URLs we want to get screenshots from, right? And then we can use this process URLs function uh, that kind of creates a for loop that goes through every single URL and append the uh, response into all responses here. Uh, here you can see we have the text to speech and download function from 11 Labs. Uh, we just set our um, voice ID behind here. And we, of course, you need an API key. Uh, I haven't uh, done that now. We have some few parameters here we can adjust. Uh, if you want to know more about the 11 Labs API, you can just go to their uh, their website and kind of look at the, um, the documentation. Uh, like I said, here is our list of URLs. So we are going to look at tech news. So I just put down these five. And the prompt for the vision crawl function is write only short tech news headline in a bullet point format. Okay. And we're going to run this and we're going to convert it to a single string. And we're going to read the file and replace the placeholder. Uh, so we have this news.txt. So everything we collect from the GPT-4 vision uh, that is going to be fed kind of on top of this prompt here. So everything that we analyze from the images or the screenshots is going to be put on top of this prompt. 
And from all the latest tech news information above, identify the most important and mention tech news stories. Present a top five list in a conversational style with a new line between each list. So don't write more than a top five list because I only want that right. So that is basically our prompt for Mistral. And yeah, you can see we're just gonna run get Mistral response. We're gonna feed in yeah the news content that's gonna open this. And basically after that, we're gonna trigger the text to speech and download function to get the voice over for the uh, response from Mistral, right? And that is basically the code. So I think we're just gonna run it now, do a few tests. What can we use this for? I'm even not quite sure uh, myself what use cases we have for this, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. Okay, so let's test this out now. So remember, we are gonna now try to just collect the latest uh, trending tech news. So remember, we set up all those URLs from tech websites and we're just gonna run it now. So what's gonna happen now is we're gonna go to The Verge. You can see the screenshot pops up here. We're gonna send that to GPT-4 Vision. We're gonna extract all the information we can see on the front page here. And we're just gonna move on to the next URL. And here you can kind of see Gizmodo. And in the back here, you can see we get those um, bulleted points we wanted, right? And here is the Wired. Wired, is it called? Wired. And yeah, you can kind of see all screenshots just pop up. It's kind of a good way to just read all the front pages if you just wanted to do that. Here is CNBC. And you can see the pages are not fully loaded, but it doesn't really matter because we get the headlines and stuff, right? And yeah, I think that was it. Uh, so it's quite quick, to be honest. And you can see all the bulleted points here. And now kind of the Mistral model takes over. And you can see it kind of streams. Uh, it tries to stream at least. Uh, all the information we want in this um, response here. It's a bit slow because we're using the medium model, I think. And sometimes it doesn't... It gets completed in the background before. Uh, so we kind of get the mp3 file starting and yeah. But it, it doesn't really matter. We can just read it at the end if you wanted to do that. Uh, so we're just gonna let this run for a while now. And after this has gone through everything, we get the mp3 file and we're gonna have a listen to that. Okay, so you can see it kind of completed now, downloaded mp3 file to downloads. So we can go up here and we can just play this mp3 file now and let's listen to like, yeah, I don't know, 15 seconds of this. According to a report, Apple plans to discontinue the sales of the Apple Watch Series 9 and Watch Ultra 2, which could be a major blow for the tech giant. Rite Aid has been hit with a five-year ban on using AI facial recognition technology following a proposed settlement with the FTC. This comes after the company was criticized for its reckless use of the technology. Adobe has announced that it is abandoning its plans to acquire Figma. This decision comes as a surprise, as the deal was seen as a major move for Adobe to expand its offerings. So yeah, that's basically it. We kind of get like a textual output, we get like a, a audio output, and yeah, basically just a fun project to work around with this new technology with Vision. And I like this puppeteer screenshots I think the, there's a lot of cool stuff we could do with that. Uh, I just wanted to run one more example where we kind of change up uh, the data we want from this, right? Let's try to test out this use case. So I'm a avid sports fan and I like to follow along like here is basketball. Uh, don't mind the games. Uh, this is just that is live at the moment. So we have a basketball game here with all the player stats and stuff. And we have like a football game here with statistics. So I just copied these URLs. I went over here and you can see I put the URLs here in our um, list down here, right? And I changed up the prompts a bit. So now um, your job is to extract the following information about the sports game in the image. So we want the score, we want the basic statistics, and we want the best performing player if applicable, right? And we kind of change up the prompt here. So from all the information above, write a short report on the sports games you are tracking suitable for a voiceover. So basically what I was hoping for that we can kind of track multiple games live and get like a, a voice and like a textual report back on the, the scoreline and how the game is developing. So let's try to run this now and see, yeah. Does it work? Okay, so let's run. So you can see, yeah, we are processing the correct URLs. Here we kind of pop up the first screenshot. This is from the basketball game, right? And you can see all the statistics down here. Yeah, we get some kind of response here. That looks quite good. 
And next up is the football game. Still nil nil. Kind of in the first half here. Uh, yeah, this is looking good. So let's see here now. Okay. So yeah, we got the score, statistics, best performing players. And now everything is going to be sent over to Mistral and it's going to be processed uh, with the new um, the new prompt we created, right? Okay, pretty good. You can see the first thing we got was the basketball game. We got, uh, yeah, quite a short report here. And in the football game, uh, yeah, another one. And we created like a voiceover for this. So we're going to take a quick listen and see, yeah, if it makes sense. In the basketball match, the Yamagata Wyverns defeated Aomori with a score of 77. 66. However, the best performing player of the match was Okajima K from Yamagata Wyverns, who scored 17 points, two rebounds, one assist. All right, that's something, right? Uh, it's kind of boring. It's kind of dry, though. But let's have a listen to the football. Erzurum Spor had 52% ball possession compared to Umrani Espor's 48%. Both teams attempted one goal each, but none were on target. Yeah, I think that's fine. <laughs> uh, I think we can do a lot of work with um, the prompt editing part here, but that was not the point. Uh, I think we kind of got but everything we needed here. Like uh, if you look at the, this part, we kind of we get the score, we have the statistics, uh, best performing players, and stuff. So yeah, uh, yeah, guess it works quite good. Okay, so uh, yeah, quite a fun project, uh, nothing brand new, but uh, I really like the integration of this puppeteer and taking the screenshots and using that instead of the traditional web scraping with like beautiful soup. So uh, I had a lot of fun with this and I think there are more uh, exploratory things we can do using this technology. Like if you have some good idea, leave, a link, leave something in the comments below. Uh, also this, I'm going to put it up on my GitHub, so you can just follow the link in the description to get this. Uh, if you want to support me, you can always become a member of the channel, where we will do more things like this going forward. Uh, but yeah, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you again on Sunday.